Hello everyone. Yeah, let's wait for a short while. Uh, can you see me? So far, there's only one people. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> let's wait for a short while. Um, today's target, right, is actually to do a, a quick review before I jump on to YouTube Live, right, on the comparison between the niche grinder and the DF64, right. So I'm gonna compare these two, right. I'm gonna do something like a comparison between the espresso grind, right. If I can, I'll also do a pour over, right, to compare. So let's wait for a short while longer. Hello, Eduardo. Right, so let's wait for a short while for more people to join us. Right, um, basically, uh, I have uh, gotten one of this, right? Uh, so I'm going to do a few tests. I'm going to see whether um, the pour over. Hi. It's morning there, right? It's uh, almost 11 p.m. here in Singapore. Right, so basically this is the DF64, right? Uh, it's called DF64 in Singapore, Malaysia and China, right? Uh, but I think in UK it's called the Solo, I think so, right? Uh, I'm not too sure what is it called in the US. Right, probably it's called Turin or something, I'm not very really sure. But basically they are all the same grinder, right? They are all the 64mm flat burr. Uh comes with a standard ETA mail. Hi, yeah, it's it's fine, yeah. Because we are at a different time zone, so it's okay. So um a lot of people ask me whether Hi, hi Aaron, hi. Ah, it's called the Turin in the uh, US. Right, I think, uh, so we're going to test this grinder, right, and um, basically uh, a lot of us are very interested how this grinder actually compared to the niche, right. So I have, since I have both, right, um, I would like to do a simple comparison. And uh, I'm going to use the, uh, this is actually the Molesto, right, EM19 uh, M3, right, it's actually made in China. So uh, I'm going to use this machine to pull an uh, espresso shot. And I'm also going to do a quick pour over to see whether the DF64 have any actually taste profile difference uh, with the pour over, right? So we're going to do a quick one, right? So I think uh, let's get started with the beans, right? Let me bring you closer. Right, so basically this is how it looks like. Right, as uh, I think for uh, all of you are very familiar with the niche, right, and maybe not so familiar with the um, DF64, right. So this is actually a single dose uh, grinder, which has a 64 mm uh, flat burr. Uh, it comes with a standard ETA mill, right, uh, stainless steel burr. So uh, I'm just gonna do a quick test. So you come with a dosing cup, plastic one. Right, so um, same thing as the niche, right? The niche um, adjustment is actually inside here. Right, you can turn this for adjustment. Hi, Linda. Right, this is the DF64. Right, I'm comparing the niche with the DF64. Right, so you can see uh, the niche can be uh, adjusted with the collar here. Right, there's actually a pointer here which allow you to see which uh, position you are at. Right, the DF64 has a dial here as well. What are we comparing? Yep, so uh, let me bring you closer. You can see the dial here. Right, the dial here allow you to, so the color here can be turned. Right. 
Yep, so basically we are comparing these two. And after that, we're going to pull a shot on the espresso. I'm just going to quickly taste it, see how the taste profile is like between the niche versus the DF64, right? As all of us know that um, probably the flat burr give us a more uh, rounded, uh, more um, more sort of a chocolatey tone from the espresso, whereas the niche will actually bring out the brightness in the coffee, in the espresso. So um, we're going to see whether this is actually true. Of course, uh, I, I'm going to stand by my specialita, right? Um, but I think these two will be uh, quite a good comparison for today. Right, so uh, let me try to dial in the bean first. So let me get some coffee beans. Uh, okay, I will be using a beans that will give us the fruity profile, right? Which is actually the coffee bean from it, um, Guatemala, right? So these are coffee beans are famous for you know the fruitiness, and you can see this is a pretty light rose, right? Um, so uh, we're gonna use this as a test. Right, so let's do it. Right, so I'm just gonna dial uh use eighteen grams. Right, sorry for the alarm just now, right? I think my wife opened the door and activated the alarm. Right, so 18 grams, right, so we're going to test retention as well, right, so uh, for the DF64, I have to dial in because this is a new machine, so it has not been used before, right, so I have to dial in this one. Okay, but uh, for the niche, it's pretty easy, usually I do espresso at about uh, 12 to 11, so maybe I'll set at 12 this time. So the niche is actually very easy. I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> you mean the alarm? Right, so it's done on the niche, right? So let me first throw a few beans inside to see how the grind size is like on the DF64. Mm, I think this is, uh, let me compare the grind. You can see the grind is actually very uniform. Right, I'm not too sure whether you can see. Right. Okay, let me bring it closer. Right. Right. This is actually the grind from DX64. Alright. Okay, so I think I have to go a bit finer. Okay, let me feel the texture on the mm, definitely have to go finer. So very easy on the DF64, right? Basically you just have to turn the dial here. Right, and it's done. I think this is still slightly coarser than the one on the um, niche but I can feel that the grind is really very consistent right taste in my coffee would prefer fruity so this should be interesting what you find yep definitely so I will first try on the espresso Right, then I'll move over to the pour over, right? So I hope I don't use too much time today. 
Right, so I have to dial in slightly finer. I think this is about the same uh, grind, uh, same coarseness already. So I think this is about right. So right now I'm at about 9 right on the DF64. Right, so I'll dose about 18 grams and see how's the retention like. Yep. Uh, yes, it's a Sunday night for us. Tomorrow I still have to go to work. Yeah, but this is the time whereby I have uh, my kids are already asleep, so they will not be um, disturbing me at night when I do the video. Yep. So this is eighteen point one gram. So let's see whether the retention is uh, how much is the retention of the DF sixty four. There's still a bit of beans there. Okay. Okay, I think the beans hasn't come out yet. Okay, basically, um, the retention on the DS64 will get lesser and lesser, right, when the burst set is actually dialed in, right, uh, from the factory, it told us that we have to run in about 1 to 2 kg of beans, right, before the retention is improved, so this is something that, uh, if you own a DS64 and if your retention is not so good, right, this is something that, uh, that may happen, right, you can see that now I have only about 14 grams, which means there are actually 4 grams of beans stuck inside there. Okay, never mind, I'll drop another 4 grams inside and see when it comes out. Right, I think it's because this is a brand new machine, so uh, you really need to dial in. Right, I think the conical burr is always easier to perch out because conical burr uses uh, the gravity whereby the um, flat burr uses the uh, spinning force to, to perch out the, the coffee ground so there's a slight difference between the two the pin is being grinded. Okay, let's wait a bit. Right, yes, it's about 18 grams now. Right, so all the pin has come out. Okay, let me get the pins back. Right, so I think uh, we can now pull a shot to see the taste profile. Right, so my machine has been warm up already. 
so I'll be using my um, um, this is the EM19 M3 right from Molesto again this is a Chinese made machine yep SGB is also conical yep so uh, let's see how it goes on this one okay so I'm gonna pull two shots and taste um, the espresso Okay, so I'm going to try to use a bottomless, right, to see the inspection. Um, basically, this is a dual boiler machine, right? It comes with a blue boiler and a thermal block linked to a smaller boiler. So it's actually dual boiler, but the steam is actually from a thermal block, right? Yep, SGB pearl is conical. And I get most all beans out. Okay, so uh, let's pull a first shot on the niche, right, and see how the taste profile like. Right, so I'm just going to uh, I'm not I'm just gonna distribute and temp. I'll be using the cookie press. Right, you can see it's very flat. Right, let's put a skew underneath. Okay, let me bring you closer. Uh, see whether I can turn the camera. Okay, uh, yes, I can. Yep, so I hope you can see better. Right, um, okay, let's roll. I think the flow is a bit fast and there's quite a bit of channeling right so I probably have to dial in but never mind for today I'm just gonna taste a shot right so this first cup is actually from the niche right so you can see a um, pretty good shot right but it runs a bit fast right so I'm gonna do another one Right, the cups also fit very nicely onto the polar filter, right? Okay, I think... Uh Try this is actually from the DF sixty four. Right, let me bring it closer to see the extraction. Oh, I think I grinded a bit too fine. I well, can see that it's choking. Right, so I think I have to 
regrind the shot. I think it's a bit too fine. Right, so just give me a second. Redial it, right? Okay, so I have to run another shot on the DF64. Right, can see there's only two drops coming up. Right, so I have to grind a bit coarser. That's about 18 grams. So let's run another shot. Right, I can see I can see that the spinning of the motor actually trying to push out the coffee ground itself. All right. Right, 18 point 18 grams, so it's about correct. So let me try to pull a second shot. Right, so this one you can actually see the coffee ground inside there. Right, just now I grind it a bit too fine. Okay, let's try the second shot. Okay. Okay, let me bring you closer. Right, I hope you can see. Hi Matthew, hi. Okay, still a bit too fine, right? Um, but it's better than just now. Hi, Hanzo. Right, so uh, I'm just gonna let it run, right? Um, because I don't want to use too much of your time, so I'm just gonna do it quickly and taste the espresso. Right now it's about 27, 29 seconds, 30 seconds. I'm only getting about. Um, Okay, I will try to get around the same, right? Right, so uh, this shot can be further improved, but I'm just going to quickly taste the shot and see how it tastes. Yeah. Yep, you're right, uh, maybe a bit too uh, high hoon, right? So I'm just going to give a quick taste. This is actually from DF64. Right, this is actually from the niche. Right, so I'm just gonna get a spoon and uh, taste the espresso. Matthew saying, what's up? Isn't it the day? Too late for coffee, Dad? Yep, uh, yes, it's actually 11, so I'm not gonna drink the whole uh, espresso. I'm just gonna taste it. Yeah, I, I know it's bad for the farmers who actually farm the coffee, but it's already at 11.30 p.m. here, so I probably won't drink the whole shot. Yep, uh, I can drink coffee anytime too. Hi Bob. So this is the first cup, it's actually from Niche. 
right? Um, niche is very easy to dial in, right? But then for my DS64, uh, you know, it's a, I have, I, this is a brand new one, so it, it takes a while for me to dial in the machine. So cheers. Oh, I, it's very, very bright, right? So this is actually from the um, niche, right? So I can taste that the, um, I can get all the fruity and brightness from the high bob. I can get all the fruitiness and the brightness from the Guantanamo beans, right? This is actually from the niche. Right, so let me taste the one, the one from the uh, DF64. Right, cheers. It is still um, bright, but it is definitely more balanced, right? And uh, it is mellow, right? Not as bright as uh, the one from Niche, definitely. So there's definitely a taste profile difference between the the DF64 and the Niche, right? So the Niche actually brings out all the brightness and acidity in the Guantanamo beans. Uh, using the same beans, uh, the DF64 produces a much more rounded mellow it is still acidic but it's not as acidic as the uh, niche right so this is actually the comparison a quick comparison between the two right so now i i, I can't drink this uh 11 11 30 uh, p.m at night so um yeah probably i'll dump it into a cup and make to a, a cold americano tomorrow right so this is still i'm not gonna pour this away right so this will be safe okay so right now I'm gonna do a pour over, right? So a quick one, right? I'm just probably just gonna do about 10 grams, right? So uh, uh, while waiting for my water to boil, is there any other questions you have for me? Right, is there any other questions on the niche and DF64 or my uh, dual boiler here, right? This is actually around around 700 sing dollar. So it's probably around, um, how much in USD? I'm not very sure. Um, if you divide by 1.35, I think that's about the exchange rate now. So let me get uh, my kettle boy, and we're gonna taste the um, the taste profile of the power, right? Right, let me switch on my kettle. Uh, okay, question, will the ground looks different from uh, Niche and DF64? Um, I'll probably do a more in-depth one. Right? For today, I'll do a quick one because I don't want to spend too much time on uh, on Instagram, right? We're occupying your time, so I'm just going to do a quick one. Later on, I'll do a more in-depth video on the review of uh, these two. Right, uh, I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna dial in the beans and and see uh and and, and check uh the grind because uh to see the grind I really need to uh use a magnifying glass to see right because naked eye probably can't see the difference that much. Right, so okay, so I'm gonna redial in. Right, for niche it's very easy. Usually do pour over. I'll do around for around forty five. Right, so it's pretty cost. Right. And for the uh, DF64 again, I have to taste. Uh, I have to test the the beam, right? So again, I will just adjust this. Right, I will first adjust to fifty and see how it goes. Right, this is still pretty fine. I think it's from the remaining coffee just now. So I'm just going to turn more. 
right i'll tell you about the setting later on let me first get into the dry size Okay, uh, regarding about the burr type, um, I think some of you asked whether you should use the titanium burr or you should just wait for the SSP. Uh, if you want to upgrade your burr set, right, I think you should stay with the ETA male stainless steel burr first. Then if you want the SSP, you should just go for SSP, right, because I think SSP, um, I think the grind will be more even, right, and the uh, the durability of the SSP burr is actually, I, I believe it can grind up to 4,000 kg right, of bins, right, which is 4 tons. Uh, I, I don't think we'll grind that much of coffee in our lifetime, right? 4,000 kg. It's crazy. The DF64 makes the same sound as mine. <laughs> really? Yup, it's the same kind of sound, right, Bob? Right, uh, I think... I have to grind a bit coarser for pour over because usually I do coarser than this, right? Do you still do specialita? Um, nowadays I seldom use my specialita anymore, right? So, um, Dylan, if you want, um, I will suggest you go for SSP. Don't do uh, titanium, right? Titanium costs around uh one third of the SSP. So I think SSC, SSP is more worth it. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I'm going. Uh, my stop for the SSC burr is coming. Uh, uh, this is the uh, SSV rate speed coated. Uh, we have ordered both the espresso uh, burr set as well as the multi function multi purpose burr set. Uh, that is actually more towards the. Um, if you are getting the multi purpose one, you'll be used in both the espresso as well as the pour. Right. The the built in um the default. Itamil set allows you to book both, right? Right, I think water is boiled already, so I'm just trying to down the size. As you can see, the sound of the grind is actually pretty, uh, pretty soft. Eureka is coming out with some kind of single dozer accessory. Ah, really? Eureka is coming out with something? Hmm, okay. Uh, I think the, the grind size is about right for now. Right? So I think we can grind about, I'll just use about um, maybe um, 10 grams, right, to taste the profile. So I'll dose 10 grams on each. All right, let's. So basically now we are doing the pour over, right? To see whether there's actually a taste difference between the two. Okay, I forgot to switch on those. Okay. We'll just be weighing 10 grams, right? Right, so this will be about 10 grams. Right. You will auto cut off the power after about 40 seconds, right? So we are done with both. So now let's test the pour over. Right, I'm gonna just gonna use a simple uh, um, kettle, right, with a claw filter. This is my favorite. Right, this is actually from uh, my friend Matthew. Right, I'm still using this. It's my favorite.
Um, I don't have an AeroPress. Um, I wanted to get one, right? Um, you'll be very interesting. I don't have an AeroPress yet. Right, let's test on the niche first. This is actually the ground from the niche. Boil the water again. I do have a hand presser, right? Uh, I'm gonna test this. All right, it's a hand presser. I got it. I got it at twenty Singapore dollar. Right, it's a it's a second hand one. Uh, it looks something like this. Right, so I'm gonna play with this. This is actually a hand pump, right? Can achieve nine bar pressure on this. Uh, there's no need to use um, uh, CO two, right? Just use something like a bicycle pump, right? A pump. Yep. So I'm gonna play with this. Right, so I use about 10 grams, so I'm gonna get about 150 grams. I'm just I'm just gonna do two pours, right? Uh one pour about 40, then the second pour I'll top up to 150 grams. Right, let it bloom for about 30 seconds. I'll top up water all the way to uh, 150. So I'm going to use about 1 is to 15 ratio. So a lot of you have question on whether the EF64 can she do pour over. So this is the time, right? Uh, have you covered that in your YouTube already? Actually, no. Uh, I haven't tried um, using the DF64 as a pour over uh, grinder so this one have not covered yet so i will be doing that very soon okay uh, i forgot to heat up my cup so let's do it here right i think so it's ready so this is actually from the niche right so let me get an uh I'll be back very shortly. Right, so now I'm going to uh, do the same thing again, but this time for the ground on the DF64. I think no one has made a uh, pour over coffee on the DF64 yet. So let's try. Again, I'll do about 45 grams of water. Right, I can see the bloom, the bloom is different. Right, uh, the bloom on the niche uh, gives off more carbon dioxide gas whereas the uh, bloom on the DF64 doesn't give out as much uh, as gas as possible uh, where do you get the glass container? Uh, Hanzo which one? is it this one? this one you can buy from um, I think I bought it from AliExpress right? it 
cost around 10 to 15 sing dollar I think about 10 US dollar so it's a pretty cheap one and it's really good for one person right so it's about 150 grams of water right so very in short we're gonna taste the profile So I'm, now I'm actually using the DF64 uh, as a pullover grinder, right? So let's taste the, is there any difference between the profile? Yeah, this is actually for two person, right? It's actually much smaller than the V60, right? It is actually a, a smaller version of the Keymax, right? Right, you can see there's a silicon, silicon holder here, right? So you can hold, right? It will not be too hot. Right, so this is done. Right, so this cup is actually from the DF64. Right, let me show you. Right, and this is from the niche. Right, so I'll first um, give a taste on the niche one first. So let's um, taste this. Right, this is from the niche. Wow, it's very nice. Yeah, I think niche is really good for pour, right? Um, never fail, right? This is a very good cup of coffee. Um, surprising, right? Over the pour over, actually tastes better than the espresso. I think the espresso just intensify the taste of the acidity, right? Uh, when you do a pour over, this is so much better, right? That's why the light roasted bean, I normally don't do an espresso. I do a pour over, right? So this is much, much better. Hmm. Right, um, it is bright, but not as bright. Um, is it? It is. How do I mention this? Um, it is very balanced, right? Uh, it is citrus, fruity, but not acidic, right? Um, okay, let me taste the DF sixty four, right? The one from DF sixty four. Oh, this is this will be hotter, right? Because I I made that earlier. Wow. You know what? If you don't like a very citrus cup of coffee, I think you should you should get the DF sixty four. This simply just gives you a more rounded shots. Yeah, it 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 gives you the. Uh, both both coffees are very nice, uh, but this one gives you a more balanced shot. Uh, it swings toward the middle rather than the niche, which brings out the acidity, right, and the brightness. This one make it more mellow. At the same time, it gives you the body and the texture. Wow, both are very nice cup. Ah, definitely this is brighter, right? So the niche brings out the brightness and a fruitiness in the coffee better than the DF64, right? But if you are looking for something that is uh, less bright and less acidic, Right, you can definitely consider the DS64, right? It is a very good grinder. I can definitely finish these two cups, which is very nice, right? Okay, um, if, if you have any question for me, right, uh, on these two grinder, uh, let me know, right? If not, uh, seems pretty big difference. Um, Bob, can you uh, elaborate? What does it mean? You mean the taste profile? Yeah, it is quite a big difference. I can taste the, uh, the brightness in the niche uh, cup. Whereas the uh, DF64 is more mellow, right? Uh, I don't really taste acidic at all, right? So it's a very balanced cup. But, um, you know, some of us that like, um, like roasted coffee, we like the floral and the acidity in the coffee, right? So if you like the kind of coffee, uh, yes, DF64 is flat burr. Yes, there's a big difference in the taste profile. Yes, definitely. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right? So it's definitely quite big a difference. So it depends on what you like, actually. Right, but um, so I definitely recommend the niche for the pour over, right? If you like a uh, light roasted coffee, uh, especially deep blend, right? Single origin, right? Definitely you should get the niche. But if you want a more rounded shots, um, 
a more balanced one and then with less acidity right you can consider the dsqc4 anyway this grinder niche costs around thousand uh when it when i bought it and bring it to singapore it costs around thousand three two thousand four um, Bob, I have no problem sleeping, trust me. <laughs> so the DS64 is uh, more of an espresso grinder, right? You can grind better espresso. Because for espresso, I don't like the acidity, right? I, I prefer the chocolatey and nutty flavor. Uh, DS64 brings out the chocolatey and nuttiness better. The niche brings out the brightness and acidity more, right? So if you have no other questions, right? Uh, I think it's your Sunday morning, it's my Sunday night. So have a good day, right? Have a good one today, and uh, I will see you uh, very soon in, in my next live, right? Uh, I will probably do a, a YouTube, right? Probably tomorrow, but not live, right? I'll just pre-record it, and uh, maybe I'll air it tomorrow, or the day after. Right? So bye-bye, see you. Uh, by the way, um, um, if, you are, if you haven't uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel, right? You should, right? My channel name is actually Cafe Matala Singapore, right? Do search for me, right? One for pour over, one for espresso. Yeah, why not, right? Uh, yes. And basically, I should have done it with the specialty tie as well. So I will test the specialty tie as well to see whether how it competes. Uh, but specialty tie, you know, is more of a harder to adjustment on the dial, right? Uh, similar to my uh, RW, R RF64W, right? This one, right? This is also a dedicated espresso grinder, right? So this one is actually very similar to the Specially tap, right? You can see the diff very similar, right? So, uh, right, that's all for uh, for you. To, that, that's all for me today, right? Um, have a good day. See you very soon.